So that's why. Again, many thanks for the invitation. And this year, especially combined with this uh, 75th anniversary, and this wonderful T-shirt can also be combined with the tie. You know? <laughs> so it's uh, also for speakers, it's well prepared, really. Now this subject about Argentina or about this uh, newly elected president, actually that was not the subject I had the intention to present you today. Actually, I wanted to present a completely different subject. I, I said it to Hans somewhere earlier this year. I would like to talk about the free will and that there is no such thing like a free will, but it's very useful that we think the will is free, something like that. And then Hans said, oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> Would, would you really like to bite out your teeth, you know, um, at such a subject? There, there is this uh, person there in Argentina, that would be an interesting topic. And, and I think that at that time, Hans was positive to uh, that. Um, probably, as we will hear today and already read somewhere, um, that's changed in the meantime a little bit. So, nevertheless, now I think that's a, a good, um, you know, introduction to this question, to this dilemma one has in such a situation. Um, if you woke up and found yourself president-elect of Argentina, you as, as anarchists or, let's say, very critical um, people against the state, how would you react in such a situation? This is what I, I ask myself, for me, president-elect at that time, not yet president. It's this stage, you know, between being elected and accepting the uh, office. An anarchist president-elect of a big state, that's a contradiction. Um, and that's, of course, I thought, how would I react in such a situation because my intention is for many years already to abolish the state to get rid of this strange organization and now how does a state president abolish the state that's the question at stake um, there are many approaches i would say for this question one approach is just to smash the state. This is what Millet always exclamates. Or may he, he did exclamate it during the campaign running for presidency with, with his uh, with the chain uh, saw. Chain saw, is that? Yes, the word. Um, uh, things like that. So just to demolish and uh, 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 yeah, smash the state. That, why, why not? But I think it's easier said than done, and that's why it's at least not the subject of my presentation today. A second approach could be to dismantle the state. I think this is, as I understand it, what Millet is trying to do right now. So one could say the classical approach of privatization that you take out certain parts of this organization, of this structure, and sell them, sell them to investors, um, so to privatize um, specific parts. It's very difficult, as he sees uh, now, I think, uh, because for some parts he already has some authorities according to the Constitution, he as the president, for others, the parliament must give him this, um, uh, this competence. So, so this is a long and hard work, which is not an objection against it, but uh, it's certainly very difficult. And again, it's not the approach I will present you today. A third approach could be just to neglect the state. 
he could do this too. Maybe that would have been meant that he did not accept the office. Um, there is a, a saying, Alexander Raviol told me, is he here? No? Ah, yes, you told me yesterday, there is a, a saying, we didn't find the precise source, that um, Ludwig von Mises, once when he had a speech in, in South America, maybe in Argentina, um, and then he was asked, uh, Professor Mises, uh, what, what would you do if you were president of Argentina? And he said, I would resign. <laughs> maybe it, it's not true that he said, but, but I think it's a, is it? Is it? Yes. Maybe Guido, he, he knows the source for that, because he is the uh, author about Mises with all. Well, it, it's a good story in any event. And, um, and that would be this third approach, you know, just not to take it, or maybe to, to take it pro forma and uh, to neglect this strange organization. Um, it, it could be consistent with anarchism. But it's, it's passive, it's, it's not, he doesn't take influence. So I think this is not um, uh, an interesting approach. Now, the approach I would like to present you is this. Um, what about focusing the state, to focus the state? I think this is what Millet should do. I think what I will show you now is consistent with anarchism and is effective. Now you probably are afraid that I am going to tell you that he should focus on core competencies of the state, which is a crazy thing. This is not what I'm going to tell you. Um, you know, focusing on core competencies, making more efficient, things like that, which sometimes uh, within you know, groups of classical liberals is, is the approach. Uh, this is not the approach I'm going to tell you. Um, um, by the way, there are no core competencies of the state. Um, except perhaps stealing money from the people, uh, warfaring, bombing streets, things like that. Building streets is not a core competence of the state, but bombing streets, that's their competence. So this is not the focus I want to um, uh, show you, but something quite different. It's this. It's a certain concept once formulated in 1999 by two Swiss economists that is called functional overlapping competing jurisdictions abbreviated FOC. It's, it's, it's an interesting small book here, um, issued in 1999, with the subtitle The New Democratic Federal Federalism for Europe. Two Swiss economists, Bruno Frey, Rainer Eichenberger, one is some, somehow older than me, the other is even more younger than me, um, I, I know them a bit, not, not, not close, closely, but I know them. And they are very, in the true sense, liberal. Liberal economists, uh, they are very oriented to free market, things like that. And what they wanted here to develop is uh, something like a, a political network system, but coming from economic approaches, economic uh, issues. And as, as the, the title says, this is, um, this, is, uh, not, this is a scheme not of one jurisdiction, of course monopolized by the state, but of, of many, many jurisdictions overlapping, not territorially fixed, uh, according to certain functions specialized, um, and of course by this structure in permanent mutual comp competition. This is this system and I thought that that could be an interesting approach. Um, and as Wikipedia is the ultimate source of all our truth, 
uh, I, even for Sean Gap, I, I realized yesterday in your beautiful pictures that you source also is Wikipedia, for me also, of course, and for everybody. And now what is interesting, there you see about this, this uh, concept, this rather, that's a, that's a translation from a German um, Wikipedia article. This rather theoretical concept has not been realized so far. And then comes something. The concept resembles a moderate form of panarchy, whatever panarchy is, and has some, few, some, some common features, some features in common with, and then, then comes a word that you do not find too often in Wikipedia, and has some features in common with anarcho-capitalism. So, so why not to take that, um, that concept and try to implement in, in such a situation now we are looking at? Uh, a word to the terminology, so that you really see it's not about focusing on state competencies. They, they call it FOSI, functional overlap, competing jurisdictions, and then they, they make a singular out of this of this, it sounds like a Latin plural, you know, and then say one such organization is a focus. And um, I, I would say now to focus the state would mean to transform the state into one such focus, which will be overlapping and competing with other such foci. That, that would be the approach. Now let's look at the state and then at this alternative of FOSI. That's the state. And for me the question, shall I now, you know, I'm elected, um, shall I now assume this position here? Um, what we have here is a big variety of functions. Um, you know, these classical functions, legislation, court, money, social welfare, infrastructure, education, health, all these things. All, all these things within the same conglomerate. Um, then you have the territorial monopoly, which is a very crucial uh, criterion. And because of that, you have no um, competition. And the membership, so-called, is mandatory. It's a mandatory submission of these people down there. The power is um, self-declared, it's a presumptuous, uh, arrogant power, not a delegated power, and not by accident, there is a fundamental top-down top -down structure, a coercive and enforcement-oriented approach. And within this system, you see that there are taxes taken from the people, um, all these duties are mandatory, and there are a lot of regulations, coercively implemented, so that's the picture of the state, which I hesitate to take over um, in that function. But now let's look at this alternative. This is the alternative. These are the FOSI. We have, we have this different um, whole variety of overlapping, also smaller and bigger pyramids, because they are two are, you know, um, uh, decentralized power centers. This DP, I mean delegated power and not self-declared power. Um, in, in different um, functions, be it health hospitals, be it in the law with arbitration, things like that, in security, in money, in insurances, all this, um, these are these, um, you know, overlapping, functional, specialized, overlapping um, organizations. Of course, between them there is a permanent competition and what jurisdiction is concerned, the, 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 that it's in force and it's in effect for the people, um, it's a voluntary jurisdiction. That here in this book is, he has some sub sub-variants, whether it's mandatory or, or voluntary, 
I follow, of course, the voluntary version. Um, so these are more contractual rights and obligations and not, you know, taking over orders from uh, top down. How this functions within these um, organizations, there are agreed services, not implemented services. Uh, there, there is a, a principle of voluntariness of membership. You can, you can uh, become a member of this or that organization. Um, you pay not taxes, but a contractual price. You have agreed services that you take from these organizations. So in sum, there is a bottom-up approach. And the power, all these power centers, there are many power centers, bigger and smaller, they are delegated um, power centers. So why not? I'm, I'm here on one of this pyramid. That was perhaps in earlier time the state. I became president, but then I had tried to expose this pyramid to competition. So that would be the approach. Um, starting from this structure, we see here one of these features is no competition. And I think that's the entrance for such a um, strategy, competition. So to open this very same organization to competition. And once you do it, once you do it, all the monopolist aspect will disappear. So there will be no territorial monopoly because they can overlap. It's not a frontier here. They can take clients over there and over here. And also this mandatory submission, there too, the principle of competition will be there. So you do not have to be a member. You can be a member of this organization or a client or a customer, but you can withdraw here and go to another one. So this mandatory um, submission will be replaced by voluntariness. So I think once you open the, the side walls, so to speak, to competition, competition makes the rest. Um, this means that this power over there won't be that arrogant anymore. They will think more client-oriented. This top-down approach won't work anymore. Because if you levy taxes and they are higher than the people are voluntarily willing to pay, they, they leave. And by this, I would say the state stops being the state. The organization as such is still there. Um, we did not abolish this organization or something like that. But um, it, it, it has changed in the meantime. Um, it's an organization like many other organizations, maybe an efficient one, maybe a less efficient one, maybe one that has big problems to make more efficiency, things like that. Um, uh, it's an organization that once in the past was called state, but in the meantime, it's one of these, um, of these functional, specialized, overlapping, competing jurisdictions. That would be the idea. And now I have six minutes left. A, a little bit more, um, you know, specific. Let's, let's take the <coughs> example of education. At the beginning, we have, in this example, a state university. And now come all these competitors in. These are local schools, maybe a whole network of schools, small scholariums somewhere, a private university. And maybe within this competition, there is one which is very successful and prominent. maybe becoming a big university, you know, about Austrian economics, things like that. Education. 
according to the FOSI system. Infrastructure, we have, let's then take the example of state railways. But we have a lot of competitors at the left and the right, local area streets organized cooperatively, perhaps a network of private automobile users maybe coming out of a successful automobile business, uh, intercompany bus, uh, inter, inter country bus companies, we have maybe a big turnpike, turnpike incorporated, private airport company, things like that. And maybe here too, maybe one coming out of this, of this automobile business is a very, very um, successful player into this overlapping uh, competition. Let's take another example, law and order, which is sometimes said to be a uh, core competence of the state. Um, according to this system, of course, at the beginning we have, for instance, some state police offices and um, forces. <coughs> now, many other competitors being there or coming in, private security services, law offices, of course, that too, local or international arbitration services, maybe specialists in consulting of, um, you know, IP projects, uh, mediation services, and maybe one, let's, let's take that example of this IP project. It's also a very successful competitor in this, uh, in this game. And the last example, money. We have fiat money. Um, thanks, Thorsten, for the wonderful book, uh, Thorsten, Thorsten, with the money from the devil, you know. Um, fiat money, but there are competitors here too. Gold traders, maybe some specialists in Bitcoin promotion, um, safe and transport uh, services for pressure, precious metals, auditing, banking, so and so on. And maybe here too, we have one that is... Uh, very successful. So, so this FOSI approach leads us to good friends. We have here uh, these functional <laughs> overlapping competing jurisdictions. So that would be the, the vision, you know, to approach. Of course, this too is much easier said than done. And, and uh, many steps have to be done until there. It's about what I will tell you is about the strategy, you know, how, how to, to take the, the fundamental approach in case you are ready to accept this position of a president of the state. So in a way, it's, a, it's the function of a liquidator of the state, but in a very specific sin, uh, th uh, sense, um, not, not to liquidate it as such, but to try to transform it to this this uh, concept of uh, FOSI. Now, uh, two things that should be amended or added in the Constitution, or let's say, let's try to formulate two principles, how to get there, or how, how, how can one formulate it as the principle of a state or of a program now introduced. And that would be new constitutional provisions, I think two um, are sufficient. One is paragraph one, nobody, it is no physical person nor any other legal entity is allowed to exclude anybody from competing with his or its social connections or business activities. This is paragraph one. This is this principle. This is let, the, let coming in competition from all sides. Paragraph two, now don't be afraid. Paragraph two, any monopolies traditionally hold by the national state, by federal member states, as well as by official communal bodies are exempt from the rule of paragraph one. Now, don't leave the, the, the hall, because it, 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 it continues. I thought, you cannot do that overnight. If you do it overnight, maybe a chaos would 
uh, come in, the chaos would come in. So um, what? So, so at least you should you should give a, a timeline. Um, not not to do more than just to open the competition, but uh, let's say where you have these established um, harmful monopolies of state organizations do not just uh, take them away overnight, but um, give a timeline and say by then it will happen. So you are invited to prepare it, but how, how you do it, do it. Um, but um, you have to organize, you have perhaps to find investors to come in, things like that. In any event, I would say as a transitory provision, these organizations are included, for instance, until December 31st, 2030, for instance, or how, whenever you, you put this, this line. So with, with this vision and with this very simple formula, I would say, I would say, let me take the job and focus the state. Thank you.